All right. Gentlemen, first of all, Barry Jenkins, it's a pleasure, man. Medicine for Melancholy. Thank you, man. Love that movie, man. Appreciate it, dude. Your screenplay, Terrell, amazing. Or your play that the film is based off of is very good. Um, welcome, first of all, uh, Moonlight. I was just li reading reviews uh, that are coming in from across the country. And as you can tell, people really, really love this film. Mm -hmm. um, so I will first off pose the question that both of you guys can answer. Um, how does it feel to get that, that kind of, that love when you kind of are working on something that is kind of a, a passion of yours, but then to see how well it's received by others yeah. as well? No, I mean, it feels, it feels good for sure, but I think even more than that, um, you know, it's very hard to see, that, like you said, these things that are very personal, you're very passionate about. I think whenever it's really personal and passionate, you think it's really small. You know, it's like, it's like this is a thing that only me and Terrell can relate to. You have that in the back of your head, you know? And so for me, every time we've shown it from the first screening to, you know, the screenings this weekend, you know, I, I remain consistently surprised, you know, and again, you know, and, and heartened that people were seeing, you know, both seeing the characters, who they, who they fully are, you know, but also through that, seeing themselves um, in the work, which I think that's the whole purpose of art, is to sort of share your experience, you know, so we can sort of find this sort of like, commonality amongst us, you know, and, and not commonality of like person, but commonality of feeling and experience and emotion. And and that has for sure been happening. And it's like I mean I, I couldn't be, you know, more more sort of proud, you know, uh, of of this thing that we've created, you know? Troy? I am always uh, shocked, <laughs> I guess, when people actually see fleet pieces and yeah. and care about it. I mean I wish I were the kind of person who would like sort of went Course, but I, that's never been me, mm. even in the work that I create for the theater, great, large or small, uh, when people see it and react uh, in any way, when they're moved by it, I, I'm often, you know, taken by surprise. Right. Um, but I also, I also enjoy talking about the work more than I enjoy talking in life. Mm. <laughs> so, it, so it, it, it's a place where I sort of feel like that's why, I, um, or one of the reasons why. I, create work is so that we have something to come to the table at, about um, so that feels really good it feels really helpful for me to be able to 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 start a discourse and then to have people want to join in mm -hmm. if that makes any sense mm -hmm. like when mm -hmm. you when you to me starting a piece of art is starting a conversation um, and when people want to join in that it's surprising but also beautiful mm -hmm. now let's talk a little bit about this film and, and, and what struck me immediately I went in and you know, we're kind of conditioned, like especially people who do what I do. When you watch a lot of movies, you know, there's foreshadowing, we see where you put the camera, we kind of try to figure out where you're going with the story before you even get us there, right? Mm -hmm. And what surprised me about how effective what you did, Barry, was such a good job is the, the absolute tenderness. And I must have said that word in my review probably about 10 times mm -hmm. of how tender this, this story was and trying to relate to people like, you know, hey man, you need to see Moonlight and everybody has their preconceived notion on what it is. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but it's such a tender, well-told story. Mm -hmm. Was that, and, and I guess Terrell, you, this is also for you. I mean, because I haven't seen your play that this film is that, that's kind of loosely based on. Mm -hmm. um, what, did you make a, a, a subconscious effort in the telling of this story to kind of to to present this 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 subject matter in a way mm -hmm. that we haven't seen it presented on a screen before? Yeah, I mean, it kind of it kind of starts with T. I mean, like the the play was sort of, uh, you know, it's never never produced or performed, you know. Right. I don't think it was this thing that was ever rooted in the stage, you know. The way I describe it is when it came to me, it was like, you know, halfway between the stage and the screen, you know. It was very, very visual. And at the core of it uh, was this character, Juan, you know. I think whenever people talk about the tenderness, they, they sort of hone in on the Juan character first and foremost. Um, and the whole piece, and Terrell can speak to this more, the whole piece exists because of this sort of friendship, you know, that uh, this mentorship Terrell had with the drug dealer named Blue, you know, who the character Juan is based on. So, so that tenderness you're talking about, mm -hmm. and this sort of, this idea of intimacy, you know, as this vessel for nurturing, you know, that was always rooted um, in the piece. And I think in the translation of it to the screen, you know, if there, if there was one thing, and there were a few things that were always in my mind, one was preserving Terrell's voice, it was about also carrying this notion 
of tenderness, you know, and intimacy and nurturing, you know, within the community, you know. Um, and, and so it was, it was always there. It wasn't something we talked about on set, but I think when you read, you know, when I read his piece and then when anybody read, 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 read the script, they felt that and, and they understood that that is what this is. I mean, yeah, am I right? No, for sure. I mean, I think, again, even honing in on, on Juan, the character, I think one of the things that was always important to me from the off that I think you got right away was that, you know, this story is, is talking about love for sure, mm -hmm. but, you know, we, we, we sort of defy the notion of, of eros mm -hmm. or libido and are really talking about familial love, mm -hmm. friendship, intimacy in the ways that, and, nur and, and you used the perfect word, I think, which is nurturing, mm -hmm. um, which is something that we never tie back to black men. But mm -hmm. it, it, the staggering thing to me is, I think you could probably tell me about three or four men in your life who nurtured you. Absolutely. I know you can, mm -hmm. and I know I can. Now, sure, they may not have been our fathers. Exactly. All right. And in my may, case, they certainly were not. Right. Father. Right. Right. <laughs> and in my case, there were. It was a drug dealer who sold drugs in my neighborhood, but also uh, nurtured me, taught me how to ride a bike, taught mm -hmm. me how to swim. And you know, if we keep, when you say you talk to people about the story and how tender it is, if we keep telling ourselves that we can't talk, if we can't have tender stories about men of color, we are in some trouble. Mm -hmm. We're in trouble because we keep telling our young people that we can't get you can't get that nurturing from from men. You can't be nurturing to young men. You yeah. can't, and it's just not true. We know it's not true. And, and, and I gotta say this, and and the point wasn't to make a movie that was a corrective to the lack of portrayals of tenderness. No, of it was nurturing. exactly right. It was, it was just about showing what was actually there. Sorry. No, 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 yes, no, 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 no. Good, good. Not feel like we're in church. They're like, I want to say preach. <laughs> <laughs> no, but wait a minute. So let me jump in because yeah. when you talk about nurturing, mm -hmm. it, at its core, the film is almost like a, it's a, I call it a series of connections, right? So you have mm -hmm. the connection of, is it Chiron and Juan? Mm -hmm. And then you also have Chiron and Kevin who are connecting, and then the relationship with Chiron and his mother that's mm -hmm. played by um, Naomi Harris. Harris. Mm -hmm. um, it seemed as if that relationship between Juan and Chiron is almost, is almost perfect because it filled the void in both their lives. He, mm -hmm. the need to nurture and, and have a son, the, the, the lack of a father figure for Chiron. Um, it's, it's interesting that you bring that up. Barry doesn't, I mean, I never talked to Barry in full detail about uh, mm -hmm. about the character Blue. I mean, there's mm -hmm. things written in the script, and I, and a lot of it he put right into the mm -hmm. into the screenplay. So, um, you know, I'm always thankful when, when people people see good and, and keep it there. Mm -hmm. But there are back things that he added that are actually closer to real life. For, for example, um, Blue was my mother's boyfriend. Um, my mother was, uh, I think, six months pregnant, eight months pregnant when she, when, when he died. Mm -hmm. So, he he, I knew he wanted a son. He was excited about his son being being born and coming into the world, and you know, and but but still, didn't like that didn't eclipse the fact that he treated me like his son. Mm -hmm. right. If that makes any sense, he if anything, I was good practice. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? He totally just cared for me in a way that didn't seem biased or like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm just waiting on my kid, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. And so he, that longing that you see in him, I think is, is right, and Barry put that in, it's sort of like, he picks up on him, because he goes, you know what, I got a, I got a spot for you in my heart. Mm -hmm. You may not know, but I got space for you in here. And he and that's what Mahershala does in the, in the piece. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I can't get out of here without talking about this cast. Mm -hmm. Mahershala Ali, you know, watching him in Luke Cage, watching him in House of Cards, mm -hmm. watching him in Hidden Figures coming up. Now, now I'll pause you for one Go second. Go for it. Because while doing this, he was doing House of Cards, he was doing Luke Cage, he was going up the coast, working Luke Cage, <laughs> then coming down the coast, work seven days a week. Seven days Did a week. Did kicks at the same time. Seven days a wow. week. Wow. Seven days. But, so but, just, just so dedicated and just gifted because... You know, to be able to fully be this character and then fully be, be you know, Cottonmouth and then fully be, you know, and always bring his full self. You That's know what nuts, I mean? man. Yeah. So yeah. Naomi Harris, mm -hmm. Janelle Monae, mm -hmm. of course my good friend Andre Holland. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm just, <laughs> I, I, how did you get, and, and again, I always ask directors this question and, and sometimes you guys will deflect and go, mm -hmm. oh, you know, like you just said, you know, he's able to, to kind of mm -hmm. put himself in these characters. It's part of your job 
in order to help get them there, you know, mm -hmm. to, to kind of direct them in a way yeah, yeah. to get what you need. Mm -hmm. how, how are you so able, because it's not just this film, like I told you, I've seen some mm -hmm. of your earlier work, mm -hmm. how are you so gifted in order to just kind of tap into folks, explain to them that, you know, this is what's on the written page, but this is what I need out of you in this particular scene. No, no, see, I don't do that. I, I try to put it on the written page. You know, right. I try to write a script that, that anybody who touches it can understand. Right. This is what this feels like, you know. Not this is what this is about, but this is what this feels like, you know. And, and, and I think you tap the right people, you know. I think all those folks you mentioned are very gifted, but also very soulful folks, you know. And so when they show up, they are there, not, not with a mission, but with a passion, you know. They were there because they wanted to tell the story. They wanted to tell it right. Now, on the day, you know, I always say, you know, I'm not making the script. I'm making what's in front of me. I think people appreciate that, you know. You know, I very rarely direct the first take, you know, because I want to see, you guys got the script, you know, I think we're on the same page. What you going to bring to it, you know? That's and what then, I'm looking for. And, 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 then, and then once I see what you're bringing, it's like, okay, let's shape that, you know, because I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to place onto you, you know, I don't have this mark I need you to hit, you know? Mm -hmm. What you feeling that day? You know, okay, I'm gonna take that feeling, and now let's shape it into the, into this thing that we all feel is right and true in this moment for the character. You know, because the moment in my head is not the moment in the script. It's not the moment you're putting out on set. Right? Right. Let's find the best version amongst those things. And, and everybody in this film, I will say, they were open and down for that, man. And so what you're watching when you watch this film are people who are fully in their bodies in the character. You know. Because there wasn't any rehearsal in this film, you know, and so they had to be fully in their bodies, you know. You know, the presence is what's coming forth, not, not my writing. So, T, is there any plans to ever produce uh, your your the play that uh, no. the, this the play? No. You know, no? it's funny. That's, that's a question I was going to ask. I mean, too, yeah, man. I mean, because especially well, because now, there, 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 there are things that would be different. You know, I'm actually curious there are lots about of things and and the the, the Hercule First of all, well, no, no, describe to him the structure of the play because I think there is. There's an interesting way <laughs> to do that on a stage that I don't know how you can visually follow it. I was, remember, but, remember, remember how I trusted you. Nah. <laughs> Trust me, and that okay. I, I know what I'm talking about. I mean, it wasn't that you don't think so. Listen, when I when when I put the script down, when I first started writing it, um, I, I had an old uh, playwriting screenwriting teacher named Rafael de Lima who told me he was like, "Yo, when a script is when you." A script calls me most of the time. It talks to me. I hear the voices. They they keep me up. They sing. They mm -hmm. they I can I can hear them and I see them in a specific space. It's funny. Right now I'm hearing the song from a Choir Boy. Oh yeah. Sometimes. I feel yeah. Like Motherless Child. Yeah. Yeah. No, I hear it. Yeah, so I, I, know, I know what you're saying. It haunts yeah. me, and I sort of and I can see them. I can see the actors or the people in a particular theater space. This piece never was that. It never sang to me in that way. I saw the moon, I saw the ocean, mm -hmm. I saw them standing, I saw them next to each other, I saw proximities of bodies, I heard music in the background, I saw cars, I saw I saw the streets I was I was raised and brought up on. Um, and for me to try to put that into the theatrical space, is we're gonna lose something. We're gonna lose some of the we're gonna lose the the I hate to call it that, but the the feeling, the palpable mm -hmm. feeling of those streets, which I, it's just difficult. You can't. The character of Miami is so important to this piece, um, and in ways you you talk about a lot, Barry, which is that it's it's obscenely beautiful sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I say obscenely because again, I remember I remember the time that these three dudes jumped me on the corner of six sixty fifth and I want to say ninth. Mm. Um, and I, it, between between the churches and um, yeah. and that water tank place, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they jumped me and they they had beat me up pretty bad and they punched me and I'm limping home and there wasn't a cloud in the sky. Mm -hmm. I mean it was blue, and it wasn't hot because it was fall. Mm -hmm. We just started school. It felt good outside, and like it was a perfect day for a walk. Yeah, but I was limping, mm -hmm. and like that's why. And so you can't. I don't know how to. I don't know how to other than to tell you that. On stage, I don't know how to put you in that position gotcha, where gotcha, you gotcha. see mm -hmm. the both those things because they need to be there at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's a different story if I put it in a gritty New York setting and the kid just got jumped. He's walking through the snack, the nasty snow, and his buses. Yeah, and yeah. That's different than breezes, robins singing in the background, mm -hmm. little kids doing jump rope and 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 writing sidewalk chalk and limping. I mean, it's just different. 
and I can, and to me that's so important to this piece because it, it you're not going to understand why black becomes black unless you see him in that moment unless you see him go this world is beautiful I need to become the beauty the beauty in this world in order to be my full self does mm-hmm. that make sense mm-hmm. I hope I'm making sense well my final okay. question man is there there are several scenes that are very personal and intimate in the story that kind of stand out for me mm-hmm. one of course is the scene at the dinner table when um, he is asking what I thought were really hard questions about you know so that's one um, I love the scene that you uh, I don't think you just described it but it was a scene that happens at the beach mm-hmm. in the third act between um, Chiron and Kevin yeah, I think maybe second act teenagers, is that second act teenagers? no yeah, that, well, it was yeah, second yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, my, you're uh-huh. correct. Um, but there's so many small, intimate scenes that that, that comprise this project. Mm-hmm. I, I, I I think it's almost I hate to use this phrase, but I will in this case. It's almost like a masterwork mm-hmm. because when you watch a lot of movies, right, and so many people can't execute mm-hmm. films in the way that you've done it, or like films that you like. You know, you can tell the difference between a movie where you can have a bigger budget and a bunch of A-list mm-hmm. stars, mm-hmm. and it's just no soul there, and then a small project like this, mm-hmm. that you have great performances, you've got a wonderful, you have wonderful source material, mm-hmm. and it all sort of kind of comes together. Talk mm-hmm. about how, and, and I don't even know if there's a process, because you're directing every film the same. Yeah, and I'm directing every scene the same, The same, too. right. You know, like I always say, you know, a character placing a pot on the stove, it's just as important to me as two guys making out. You know what I mean? I just approach it the same way. Uh, what I think was different or unique or just special about this project was everybody across the board, they felt like every moment in this film is just as important as the next, you know? And I want to do whatever I can to get every single moment I'm in right, you know? And I think when you have people like that, when everybody's committed, I'm talking from the cast, the cinematographer, the editors, producer, everybody just cares, and nobody's thinking, this is a small thing, so the stakes are lower. It's, yeah. not, it's actually the opposite. This is a small thing, so the stakes are higher, because everything's gotta be working at a 10. But when, when you approach it like that, and you can feel that, the actors feel that, and the crew feels that, you get these things where, you're right, on the surface, there's a very small, simple moment, but it takes on the energy of the crew, the energy of the set, you know? And because everybody cares so much, and now I'm being a little bit like, like hippy dippy. I don't, you know, I don't even like to talk this way. But I think I think that stuff works its way into the piece, you know. And I think when you sit in an auditorium and you watch it, you feel that care and that passion. Yeah. And, and it's like this is a small moment, but man, there's so much in it, you know. You can't. You. I mean, you can say you're being hippy dippy about it, but I, I actually don't think it is. I mean, mm-hmm. I think that's. I mean, that's the way art. That's the way craftsmen have talked about making work all throughout mm-hmm. the history of time. Mm-hmm. When the Egyptian, when the when the when the Hebrew slaves talk about creating uh, uh, pots out of the broken pieces, there's this Hebrew understanding that if you break, if a pot breaks, you take the shards that are broken and put it back together again. Why? Because the shards that are broken, eat the ones that don't become dust, are the ones that are strongest, and mm-hmm. so you can feel the strength in it. And so it takes individual pieces that may not necessarily be together mm-hmm. at the time, but because they have that strength, you can feel it in it. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that's hippie. I think that's true. I just think the transference of that work, of that dedication, mm-hmm. comes through. And in, 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 when it's really craft, when you're like, this is my craft, this is what I do, mm-hmm. trusting per, the next person to carry the relay in the way. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, gentlemen, uh, thank you for the time. Um, you guys, again, have created an awards contender. I'm going to be out on the circuit in about five weeks. I, I'm positive I will see you again. We will, I will reference it. I'll be like, I told you I was going to see you. Um, but Moonlight, man, um, you know, brother downstairs described it as being boys in the hood for the gay community. He says it has that level of impact for him. I agree with him. I think it's an amazing film. Wow. Oh, man, much thanks, bro. I mean, you know, the, the more people buzz, awards, all that stuff, you know, only thing I care about is, you know, the more that stuff happens, the more somebody who maybe wouldn't hear about the film and needs to hear about the film, you know, they have a greater chance of hearing about it. So, and, and, and so much as that is the case, then I'm all for it, you know. So you, you realize you're about to take the next level, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Level I'm saying hey, I'm hey, saying hey. the level that studios are gonna start throwing. Now hey, right hey, now you may like, and like I said, if it's a studio film and the character's putting a pot on the stove, that's gonna be just as important to me as if he's blowing up the, the world or, or the universe <laughs> or something like that. It's all the same, bro. All, all the right. same.
Barry Jenkins, Terrell, is it Terrell Alvin? Um, Great. 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 All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Be a star. Thanks. <laughs> What's the same thing we said to Ryan Kugel after Creed last year? Hey, hey. That's the role. All right, you guys take care. Take care, sir. I stay here.